All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video, and today we are going to be upgrading the low pressure fuel pump on my 440i. I already have a big turbo kit paired with a Dorch Stage 2 high pressure fuel pump, as well as an RK AutoWorks intake manifold with port injection. So the low pressure fuel pump upgrade is just the next step to upgrade your fuel system so that you're prepared for more power. Now we'll take a look at the actual pump that I went with. And then I will also show you guys how to install it on your vehicle. So hopefully you guys find this video useful. Now, as always for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. All right, guys, so we have gone with a fuel lit low pressure fuel pump and we'll go ahead and take everything out of the box and I'll explain what it all is and why I went this route. But basically fuel it offers a relatively conventional low pressure fuel pump option. So when you're opening this, you want to be really careful because this is your fuel level sensor and it is kind of delicate. So just be careful to what you're holding on to as you pull this packaging off. You definitely don't want to get that snagged or bent or anything. All right. So let's talk about how this works. So this is a pretty conventional style low pressure fuel pump. The stock pump and the stock basket is set up just like the OEM unit, but what you end up having is the secondary pump on the side. And this pump is going to be triggered by a certain amount of boost. So when you're driving the car, your stock low pressure fuel pump will function just like normal. Even in some low boost scenarios, it'll just run by itself. Then when you hit a higher boost setup, this wire over here, will trigger the secondary fuel pump and you can see it's teed in where both fuel pumps will be activated and providing fuel to your engine. So it's pretty, you know, simple setup, something that just adds the extra fuel when you need it and runs like normal when you don't. There are a couple different fuel pump options for this secondary pump. I went with the smaller one, but if you guys are looking for really higher horsepower builds, then you can use the bigger low pressure fuel pump option. But that this is the pump that you're selecting when you pick between those two, the stock pump will still be in the regular basket. Now it also comes with a bunch of wiring. And this wiring is basically set up to trigger your low pressure fuel pump because the secondary pump is not designed the same way as the stock fuel pump. So that's why you can't just run it off of the stock controller. You're going to have to have a trigger now I'm going to wire this up to my mode of reflex because the reflex is connected to the DME so it can read boost and all of the other signals that are necessary to activate it through my tune. But if you don't have a mode of reflex, maybe you have a reflex light or something else that doesn't have the same capability, or maybe you don't have a port injection controller at all, but you're just adding your low pressure fuel pump. There is also a hop switch option. It's a really simple, setup it just kind of has this little component that will fit on a boost source and when it sees a certain amount of boost it'll complete the circuit which will turn on your low pressure fuel pump if you don't have enough boost then it'll leave the circuit open and the fuel pump won't get the electricity it needs to turn on so i'm going to wire it up to reflex and show you guys how to do that if you do have a reflex controller otherwise um you know you can get that hop switch option and wire it up to work off of that so yeah, pretty excited to get all of this going. Um, let's go ahead and get it installed in the 440. All right, so we are getting ready to get under the seat to access the low pressure fuel pump. But the first thing that you wanna do is actually disconnect the battery on your car. That will just make sure that the car doesn't try to prime the fuel system, pressurize things, and basically you know, cause a bigger mess because we are gonna be, of course, unplugging electrical connectors as well as fuel lines in order to access this fuel pump. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is remove this rear seat. It's really easy to do. You just pull up on the front of the seat on both sides. There's a little retention clip underneath here. 
and you'll be able to pull it up and then remove the rear seat. Pro tip, if you have a coupe like me, make sure you move the rear seats forward before you disconnect the battery so that way you don't have to go back and forth. So that was my mistake, but we'll figure it out. So we're just gonna pull up on the seat. And then we should be able to pull it out. So with the seat out, there's gonna be like this carpeting right here. Just kind of get that out of the way, flip it up and out of your way. And then there are five 10 millimeter nuts on this little cover for the low pressure fuel pump. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. And with this cover up, you're going to push on this little tab on the connector here and then pull that off and this will be out of your way. Now this fuel line is the low pressure feed from your fuel pump up to the front of your engine. So like I said, every time you start the car, this is going to prime your fuel system and basically try to pressurize this before you start the car. So what you can do at this point is connect your battery and start the car and run it out of fuel and it'll basically just drain the system dry without the fuel pump plugged in it won't pump enough fuel to the engine to keep it running and so eventually the engine will just die and that will basically relieve all of the pressure in your fuel system i like to do it this way i just kind of unplug my car and leave it overnight to minimize how much pressure is in here so i know every time i'm opening the door right now and stuff it's not trying to prime the car and then we're just going to add some rags to catch any excess well first there's this little white tab you're going to want to push this back and then the button is on this side so you're going to push in on the button and that's what's going to pull off the fuel line so we'll put some rags around it maybe even one on top just in case and then i'm going to push in on that little button on the fuel line and pull it off There we go, no drama. Smells great because I'm running E85. Get you some. I'll just wipe down some of this. Probably should have did that before I opened up the fuel line, but that's all right. So now that we have the fuel line disconnected, we are going to want to release this locking ring. It's basically twisted. So there is an actual tool that locks into these tabs and gives you a long handle so you can just rotate it and pop it off. I don't have the tool, so I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and a mallet in order to get this off. And I'm just putting this rag on here. I don't know why, but when I hit it, sometimes a little bit of fuel squirts out. So that'll just make sure fuel doesn't get everywhere. go using like a real big heavy mallet makes this a lot easier so we'll take that ring off and now we're going to pull out the fuel pump itself i have ran my car really low on gas i think it has like 60 miles to the tank left so maybe like four gallons so that'll make this process a lot cleaner if your tank is full you're going to have a bunch of fuel coming out and it's going to make a big mess so i highly highly recommend waiting until you're at like a quarter tank before you actually try to pull this out i already can tell this fuel line is going to be annoying just try to keep it out of your way this is one of the few times i prefer a 340 <laughs> working in the back of a coupe is not fun for stuff like this but we're going to kind of wiggle it out fuel filter comes first then pull out the lines there is one plug let's see it's over here so i'll use my little pick tool to push that in pull it out We pull this up a little bit more. There's one other line. I guess let me bring you guys over here again. So 
this yellow line or orange line that you see coming out of the fuel pump is going to the other side of the tank and the orientation it's in right now won't allow you to actually disconnect it. What we're going to do is basically you need to rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, basically towards the trunk. And then there is another little tab kind of under here at the bottom of it. And again, you push on it with like a small flathead screwdriver or something, and that will allow you to pull this line out of the low pressure fuel pump basket. So now on the bench, you can see both fuel pumps side by side. And like I said, this upgraded fuel pump is basically a stock pump that just has the auxiliary fuel pump attached to it. So you can see otherwise it's the exact same fuel pump with the extra fuel lines routed to take advantage of the secondary pump. So we're going to go ahead and install this, but a couple things. First of all, it does come with this sock and this sock basically clips onto the bottom of the auxiliary fuel pump and acts as like a fuel filter to help make sure that it doesn't suck up any debris or dirt in your fuel tank. So we'll add that on and that should help it last a very good long life. And then also you probably saw how difficult it was to pull this fuel pump out of the fuel tank. There's not a lot of space, but the good news is these kind of separate. So what I think we'll do is we'll basically pull the fuel pumps apart, unclip these fuel lines from the fuel pump itself, and then we will just lower in the secondary fuel pump first, drop that into the tank, and then we should be able to feed in the main basket and kind of clip those lines on while it's in the tank. So I don't have really small hands. I don't know how challenging this is going to be, but because of the way that this just kind of clips into the bottom, it allows you to be able to install that fuel pump first and then slide this in and kind of press it down so it clicks into place on this extra fuel pump. So like I said, the first thing I'm doing is dropping in the secondary fuel pump into the tank. I kind of moved it off to the side out of the way so I'd have a little more space. And then I connected the fuel line that goes to the other side of the tank. I connected that to the bottom of the low pressure fuel pump and then rotated into position so that it would be locked in. Now at this point, my top head actually came apart from the main basket itself. So I kind of pulled them apart and then lowered the main basket down. And that gave me the extra space I needed to reach in there and connect the fuel lines. So at this point, I was able to connect the extra fuel lines back onto the secondary fuel pump. And then I had to use the basket and kind of connect it onto the secondary pump bracket. So you can see I just stuck my whole hand in there and did what I needed to do to rotate it and push it down onto the basket. And it kind of snapped in place onto the bracket for the secondary pump. And then once all of that was connected, I just put the spring back onto the metal shaft for the top hat portion and then lowered the top hat into the tank and reattached it onto the main basket itself. I didn't keep track of that electrical connector I unplugged. So now I have to go fishing. So pro tip, make sure it stays on top of everything. So not a lot of fun overall, not impossible, definitely a much tighter fit than stock, but uh, it works and it fits. So we'll turn this around, set back in place just like stock, make sure when you seat this back down the o-ring is fully seated in its groove, you're actually supposed to replace it technically so I'll put a part number in the description if you guys want to go buy the book and buy a new one I'm just gonna reuse mine So on my car, they had a little line that marks it up, so I know that it's back at the original position. So now we've got it fully installed. Now the last thing that we need to do is the wiring, and I'm going to be wiring up everything to my Motive Reflex. It's already controlling my port injection, so it makes sense to have it trigger 
my low pressure fuel pump as well. If you don't already have one, I highly recommend it. It can also control external boost controllers. It can also control nitrous and pretty much everything that you would need as a supporting mod for your high power build. So we're going to wire it up directly to my motive reflex. I actually have a wiring diagram on their website, so I'll show you guys what that looks like. And honestly, it's pretty simple when you look at it that way. I think people just might get messed up with all the colors and stuff. So this is what your harness should look like. It should integrate some kind of simple automotive relay. And this yellow wire at the bottom is going to be your constant power. So we're going to wire that directly to the battery. Feel it added this little ring terminal so we can easily attach it onto there. Then the ground wire is this black one but you are not going to ground this. You're actually going to wire this to your motive reflex. So the actual auxiliary trigger I'm going to use is this gray one. Again, I'll show you guys the wiring diagram, but this gray wire is the auxiliary output too. I recommend using that for your low pressure fuel system. I've had several tuners recommend it to me. So this is basically the best one to use to trigger a low pressure fuel pump. So you're going to wire that up to the ground side of this relay and then the top blue line is going to be your 12 volt switched output and that's going to go to the positive terminal on your low pressure fuel pump and then this white wire on the side is going to be a 12 volt switch input so you're going to wire that up to your fuse box to a switched fuse so all of that and phase value is pretty simple of course we're going to have to find all of our wiring, routing, you know, how we're going to run it through the car and find a fuse to tap and things like that. But that's how it actually works. Now the kit, of course, also comes with the power and ground cable for the low pressure fuel pump. The power cable is going to go to the blue wire on the relay. And then the black cable is just going to be grounded. And then we also have this wiring extension. So if any of those cables need extra length, like to get from the back of the car, all the way up to the front to reach the reflex and stuff. We've got this extension wiring so that we can make all those connections work. So let's go ahead and get this wired up. So to start off with the wiring, we are going to put these terminals on your fuel pump. Luckily, fuel it did mark this. If you guys don't have markings on your fuel pump, make sure when you're before you install it, just mark a plus and a minus on the positive and negative terminal so that you know which one is which. So we're going to take these nuts off. And then you're going to put your negative terminal on the negative lead and your positive terminal on the positive lead. Pretty simple. And then put your washer and your nut back on. And then we're going to need to run the wiring through this grommet. So I'm going to get a pin to push a hole through there and we'll make it big enough for the cables to go through. So I probably spent too long doing all that, but I just really didn't want to tear into this grommet too much. So now it's still kind of like sealing and operating as a grommet and I can pull the wiring all the way through there we go give it a little bit of slack and then we will reinstall the cover plate after the job I drove down the street and my car died on me and I realized I forgot to plug the low pressure fuel pump in so yeah don't forget to plug it back in before you screw this cover on now next, we're going to need to run the wiring to the back of the car. Now this part is kind of 4 Series specific, but we're basically going to pop this latch to lower the rear seat. And then that allows us to actually pull off this piece on a three series you can literally just like reach behind it up here and pull it off but on a four series you have to lower the seat to actually get access Ooh. yeah that didn't 
feel good, but it comes off. And actually, I'm going to remove this little pin also so that I can get a little more room to actually pull this off. So now I can get this all the way and you can see straight to the battery. So we are in the trunk getting ready to finish our wiring up. We have the actual relay and I've started putting some of this stuff together. So for the fuse, make sure you actually put a fuse in there and then close that up. This positive terminal is going to go directly on the battery. So if you pop this up, there's a little nut right here that we're going to mount that on. I've also added the wiring extensions for the ground trigger and for the switched power that we're going to tap up by the reflex. And then this blue wire again is going to wire directly to this red wire that was coming from the low pressure fuel pump. So. I'm just going to cut this off, strip it, and join those two together. And then this black wire, we're going to ground back here. I know some people have grounded it on the battery negative terminal, but I'm going to try to find somewhere else to ground it. And I'll just add a terminal onto this negative wire so I can do that safely. So now I've got my trigger wire pulled back through and we're going to run this to the front of the car. Again, in a four series, this is a little bit harder, more difficult than a three series, but basically the same concept will work for either. So we're going to run it underneath the seat belt and all of this trim. And then when I come to where the door opening is, I'm basically going to pull up on this little trim piece that goes under here. So I can run the wire all the way up to this point and then underneath the glove box we're going to remove this trim panel. It's just a couple screws and then we'll be able to see the access point where we can run the wire into the engine bay. So now we've got everything removed and we are basically going to look up and see the right. And you can kind of see where this black wire, black and white wire is going through. That's my dash camera wire, but we're going to go through that same hole. So just kind of push a screwdriver or something through there to make a hole. And that will be the perfect spot for your wire to go through. And I'll show you from the engine side where this comes out in your engine bay. So switching over to voiceover since the audio got messed up on this part, but you can see where the wire is pulling out. So that's the grommet where you can push the wire through. It's right in front of the passenger side of the car. So right behind that fuse box or underneath it, but you're basically going to pull the wire through that hole and then that will give you the connection that you need to connect it to your motive reflex. Now it's a good idea to check your reflex wiring before you actually drive the car and make sure that your fuel pump is working. And the only two things that you can't test with the car off is the switched power and the reflex trigger. So in order to bypass that, we're basically going to tape our switched power wire directly onto the positive terminal. And then we've got our trigger, which is our ground, and we're just going to manually ground it. So you guys can hear the relay triggering in the background, but the pump isn't turning on. So what that tells you is that you need to double check your fuel pump wiring, make sure that the power and the ground are wired up securely and to good sources. Now in my case, it was just a bad ground. So once you fix that, you can actually hear the pump come on. So now you're good to go to finish up your wiring. 
and here's everything wired up. And again, I know I'm constantly repeating myself on this, but a lot of people have been asking me how to wire this up to a mode of reflex. So I just want to make sure this is as clear as possible. So basically you're taking those two wires that are coming from the back of your car. The red powered switched wire is going to a switched power source in your fuse box. So you can use this add a fuse and basically identify a fuse location that has switched power and you will plug this into the fuse box. You can actually also just tap onto the switched power wire for the reflex itself. That's what I ended up switching to just because it's a little bit cleaner. So I'll probably show that in a future video, but any switch power source will work. And then this ground wire is what's going to go to your trigger. And so on mine, I connected it to aux two. It is a gray wire. I know on here it looks white, but this wire up here is the actual white wire. And the one that I have it connected to is actually gray. So just make sure that you coordinate that with your tuner so that they can trigger it properly in your mode of reflex. If you're not using a reflex, you can still connect it to a hob switch. You'll connect that same ground wire to the hob switch, and then the other end of the hob switch will be grounded in your engine bay. So whenever it hits the target boost pressure, it'll complete the ground leg of your relay circuit. So that way the circuit will be complete. It'll have power and send that power to the fuel pump so it will turn on. Now, since I have a reflex, I'm just going to use that. It's going to be the best way to control it based on boost, RPM, basically all of the different things that the reflex is monitoring. We can fine tune that so the fuel pump is only turning on when I need it, regardless of how I'm driving and things like that. All right, so we have everything wrapped up now. I've got all of the trim reinstalled, seats are back in, wiring is done, all of that, and I am ready to go back to tuning my car. Real quick, I will show you where I got the ground connection in the back of the car by the battery. So you can see a picture of that. And then also I'll show you a picture of where I tapped for switched power up front by my mode of reflex. This is something that I changed a little bit because I was doing that at a fuse and then I switched to tapping the switched power for the reflex. So that way I know when the reflex turns on, my fuel pump will turn on as well. Since the reflex is controlling the fuel pump anyway, it just seemed like it made the most sense to me and was a little bit cleaner. So there are a lot of different ways you can do that. You can do add a fuse in the fuse box in the back of the car or whatever, as long as you identify switched power and wire it up to that connection. So yeah, hopefully again, this video answers any questions you guys might have about wiring up a reflex or how you install a fuel pump with a secondary pump attached to it. All of those details that seem to get people hung up. I just wanted to kind of make this video to show you guys how I'm doing it on my car. So we'll finally get back to tuning and turn up the boost a little bit more. But for now, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.